So when we reviewed the NZXT Player 3 recently, I mentioned that we also had the MG1 Diamond Shroud Edition from Main Gear in to directly compare it. Both pre-built PCs are packing the Intel 13700K or the KF on the NZXT version and also an RTX 4070 Ti. But the prices and specs are otherwise just a little bit different, so we're gonna take a dive into both of these pre-builds, see how they compare in temperatures and FPS on a few different titles, as well as compare it to the H9 build that I did myself Itself, which also has 13700K as well as a 4070 Ti. So if you're looking for a pre-built, get a nice idea between the two, which one might be your better pick. Or if you're looking to build one yourself, you might have a better idea of what kind of components you can get and not have to pay that pre-built tax. So with that in mind, let's dive in and take a closer look. Thanks for watching 9 to 5 Toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys. Pretty excited for this video. I've been really enjoying my H9 build. Uh, the Player 3 has also been really solid, but excited to see how it stacks up against the Main Gear MG1 Diamond. This is the Shroud Edition. So basically we're gonna break this comparison down into a few different categories. I want to look at temperatures between the three different builds. I wanna look at frame rates between the three different builds and across a few different titles, and just the overall aesthetics of them as well. And then ultimately, you know, the decision between building your own PC or a pre-built usually comes down to a matter of cost, so we'll break down the different components and what you're getting for the different prices and then what you could get if you do it yourself. But let's start off by just getting a closer look at the MG1 Shroud Edition Diamond and see what all you're getting in this PC. It's packing an Intel Core i7-13700K, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti, MSI Pro B660M Wi-Fi motherboard, it's DDR4, has 16 gigabytes of Kingston Fury DDR4 RGB RAM at 3600 megahertz, a one terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD, 850 watt EVGA power supply, Windows 11 Home, and RGB lighting kit. And the price on this one is $2,750 for everything you're getting there. The MG1 Shroud Edition Diamond definitely looks the part with all this RGB on here. You can see it's RGB strips down at the bottom. We've got a fan, we've got the cooler, fans up top, fans in front, and then also this uh, front replaceable piece as well. And so you can actually pop this off. Don't want to drop it. These are replaceable. We have a stock one, the stock shroud one as well. It looks like that there on the website. But you can see there's a little connector down here. So you can just pop that back on there. It's magnetic. Very easy to take on and off if you want to, you know, make your own custom front plate like this. Obviously you can see they made one for nine to five toys, what we have on here. As far as the RGB, it's just controlled. Most of it's just controlled with this little controller. So it's a little finicky, but you can get it to change all these different colors. I think you have to push this button up top to get to go into this kind of auto mode and you can't do anything. But if you push that again, then you can change the colors down here. So. A little finicky, but you know, you can easily change all the RGB with that. So nice little feature. I think this rainbow looks nice for this video. And now let's take off the side panel. We'll take a look at this side. So this one does have the two thumb screws you have to remove to open up the side panel, but then we can take a look in here. And as you can see, it looks really stinking good. Somebody spent a lot of time in here. You can tell with some of these like loopbacks how they put everything in. They've clipped off all their cable ties. Like everything looks pretty darn good in here. Uh, you know, really well done main gear for uh, routing this. This is a, this would take a while to make, you know, even getting some of these different pieces lined up. So the way that they go across into the motherboard, that all looks really, really good. So I'm not gonna spend too much time looking at all this, but you know, just by looking here, you can tell that uh, really well built. They put some real attention into running all the cables inside this case. First off, we're running the Heaven Benchmark. It's been running for about 10 minutes. It's hovering right around 68, 69 degrees Celsius, getting quite a few FPS on there. And here we'll start the benchmark to get a benchmark score to compare. And while it's been running, it's still very quiet. It actually is just about as loud as my H9 build is just idling over there. So very quiet even when running the Heaven Benchmark. 
Well, we've run through some tests and compared the MG1 to the Player 3, also the H9 build that I built myself. And so here we have some stats we can dive into and look to to compare the three. And then we'll look at pricing as well so we can see how all those stack up. So first off, let's look at FPS. Uh, this is the Heaven benchmark. So this is great for testing GPU performance. It puts like 100% load on the GPU so you can see how it performs here. And as you can see, the first one, the blue bar we'll have in all these stats is the MG1. So we got 138. The Player 3 got 145, and the H9 got 143. So a few more frames from the Player 3 and my own H9 build, but those are really close to each other, and so I don't know if it's that big of a deal. We can also look at the GPU temperatures while we were running the Heaven benchmark. So this is in degrees Celsius. You can see the MG1 was at 68, and the Player 3 was at 54, and the H9 was also at 54. So a little bit more heat running through the main gear here, but it never got out of control. And we'll take a look at that uh, in just a little bit. And now let's move over to FPS in Battlefield 2042. Now this was interesting to me. You know, basically all three of these computers have pretty much the same hardware. They're all using a 13700K or a KF in the NZXT Player 3. And then they also have a 4070 Ti. So playing Battlefield 2042, I did the same scenario. It was just one of the you know single player modes playing breakthrough on the new Flashpoint mission. So just playing against AI to test uh, FPS. And what I got was you know pretty similar on the MG1 and the H9. For some reason, the Player 3 was, I mean, it's, it's still getting 150 frames per second playing on Ultra with everything maxed in Battlefield 2042 in a really cluttered and chaotic game mode. So 150 frames per second at 1440 is still pretty darn good, but that is, you know, noticeably lower than the other two builds. And now we'll move over to the FPS in Forza Horizon 5, nearly identical across all three. So right around 110. One lower on the Player 3, but I don't know that that's something you can really, you know, consider or look at. So where things started to get a little bit interesting, uh, I first noticed it when I was doing a Prime 95 stress test on the CPU, you know, just to test how loud they would get, um, you know, what it would do when the CPU is running at 100% load. And one interesting thing we saw here, and you'll see in this score on Cinebench with the multi-threaded, is that the Player 3 and the H9 had very similar scores, but the MG1 is quite a bit lower. And that's because it seems like on the main gear, the MG1, it's kind of limited a little bit. We've had Prime 95 running for a little while here on the MG1. You can see here, utilization is at 100. And you can also see the clocks sitting around 3890 right now with a peak of 4190. And looking up at powers, the wattages for the CPU, a max of 126. And keep that in mind as we hop over to the other PCs. Now it is extremely quiet. Uh, like it sounds like the fans are barely running right now, but that will be indicative of how much power it is getting and putting out and what kind of performance it's doing. For comparison, here's Prime 95 on the H9 build, which also has an Intel 13700K. You can see for power, we're running at 280 watts. This has been running for five to 10 minutes, somewhere in there, a max 280. And you can see clock speeds are a lot higher. 5288 is the max, but we've been hanging out around 5,000 for quite a while, which is more than what, was, than what we were getting on the MG1. So it wasn't getting as much power as both of these other builds were when it was at 100% load. So a couple of things that did is it helped to keep the temperature a lot lower and also the fans weren't nearly as loud, so it was much quieter. And as you saw in that FPS comparison, that didn't really make a difference when it came to actually gaming, which was really interesting. You know, Mandir talks about this computer being, you know, fine-tuned for gaming and FPS gaming, and it really seems like that's where that's kind of standing out. You know, maybe it misses some of that top end in a benchmark, uh, you know, 100% load situation like this when you are running Cinebench, but when it comes to actually gaming, it doesn't make that big of a difference, or at least not in the games, I guess, that I was playing. I'm not sure what else 
uh, would really would really tax it more or cause that to have more issues. And so here we'll take a look at some other stores, Cinebench Single. So it's not using all the processors, it's not getting nearly as hot. You can see that the scores were much more, uh, much closer. Even the player three was just, you know, slightly behind the other two. And then we get over to some of the temperatures. We'll look at temps for gaming. This was once again, I took this while I was playing Battlefield 2042, the same thing where I was testing the FPS. You can see that the MG1 did get warmer. It was up at 68 degrees Celsius, where the Player 3 and my H9 build were down in the lower 60s, so 62 and 64. All are very close together. All those temperatures are totally fine, nothing to worry about there. When we were talking about the Prime 95 testing that I was doing, both the Player 3 and the H9 were up in the mid to upper 80s when it was running, you know, full tilt with that CPU just going, you know, super hardcore. The fans are ramped up. The fans were much louder than what the MG1 was, but the MG1 still stayed around that 68 degree mark. It didn't really get above that at all. So it really seems like Main Gear is trying to keep the temperatures down a little bit, which also helps with fan noise, but it didn't have that big of an impact when it came to gaming. And the last thing we'll look at here is GPU temperatures for gaming. Once again, the main gear was the warmest in here at 63 degrees, but once again, totally acceptable, nothing too crazy there. Whereas the player three was down at 50 and the H9 was a little bit higher at 56. What's really interesting in that is that the H3 has, you know, the fewest amount of fans by far, <laughs> especially that would be cool in the GPU. So it's really interesting that it scored that well. It is in a flow case, you know, so it has a little bit more mesh to it in the front and the back, uh, instead of like the glass on the H9 or this panel here on the MG1. But yeah, those are the numbers we're seeing there. Once again, nothing crazy there. Like all these are totally acceptable for cooling. So now let's take a look at pricing and see how those all stack up. So I have the Player 3 lined up here. It is priced at $2,500. And then if you do, if you were to build it yourself and buy all those individual pieces, it would cost you about $2,129. So a couple hundred dollars savings there if you wanted to build that same PC yourself, not have someone else build it for you. And now let's take a look at the H9 build that I did myself, uh, what kind of performance you're getting for that and what kind of prices we had there. So there are some higher end components in this because I built it myself. So we have things like a more expensive motherboard, a beefier PSU in here, we also have uh, DDR5 RAM, 32 gigabytes of it. So that is definitely you know, more expensive than the other two builds. But moving over to the main gear shroud, the price of that is $2,750. So the H9 that I did was 2,621. So a little bit less than that, but the shroud edition, you are getting that for 2,750. Individual prices, as far as what I could find, was about 2,379. Now I did have to guesstimate on the case there. Um, you know, it's a nice case, tempered glass. It does have, I kind of factored the RGB into that because it has uh, two RGB fans up top. It has the RGB strip, an RGB controller, um, and then the fan in the back as well. So my estimate for that was $200. One other thing to note on there, you can see this is a custom panel. These are $100 more. The stock panel on this Shroud Edition obviously has Shroud's name on it. And this is what it looks like. It just pops right on there. So you can see the RGB lighting up on that as well. That's the stock panel. You can design your own panels. That's $100 to get your own custom one. And so that's kind of factored in there as well. So obviously, you know, looking at pricing, just like with the Player 3, with the main gear, you do save some money if you build it yourself. You're saving almost $400 there. I mean, that's a rough estimate, so you gotta give or take a little bit, but that's enough money. You know, you could get a more powerful GPU, you could get better RAM or, or something like that if that's, you know, more catered to your specific need. But at the same time, you know, the benefit of buying something like this is everything's ready to go right out of the box. All the RGB is already figured out. They've already tuned this thing so it doesn't get super hot, yet it still performs as well as that $2,621 PC that I built myself when it comes to actually gaming, uh, you know, 
pretty much no difference when it came to frame rate and performance there. It also has some incredible attention to detail when it comes to cable management. So there are some different things to factor in there. You know, if you're considering like building your first PC or buying a pre-built, you know, if you have, I kind of said this in the NZXT Player 3 review or the video, but if you have the ability and the time to build one yourself, and especially if you have someone to help you, you know, right now there's never been a better time to do it because there's so much information out on the internet about how to do it and what steps to take. That being said, I feel like you always have to factor in extra time because there is going to be some troubleshooting when it's your first time. Like you saw with me on my H9, if you watched that video, I had the PSU in the wrong way. And so the kind people in the comments let me know, you know, it'd be best to flip that over. So of course I did. So there are always gonna be little issues that pop up that you didn't think about it when it is your first time. But that being said, if you do have the time and the ability to do that, it's a very rewarding experience to put your own PC together. And you also just get the experience of that, something, you know, something else, you know, you can tick off your bucket list and you start to understand how all the components work a little bit more and maybe have a little bit more ability when, you know, something does go wrong to troubleshoot and figure out what that could be. One other thing to keep in mind here is how quickly you need all this set up. Because if you're buying all the pieces yourself, sometimes it can take a little while to get in some of those pieces, uh, depending on where they're coming from and where you source those from. Also with the Main Gear MG1 Diamond Shroud Edition, that ships in seven to 14 business days. So it'll take a little bit longer to actually be delivered. So you'll be waiting, you know, probably at least a couple weeks on that. When it comes to NZXT and their player lineup, they're gonna be fulfilling those orders in 24 to 48 hours. Of course, you know, you will have shipping time on top of that. So it depends on where you live, you know, how far or how long that shipping delay will be, but they'll be out the door in 24 to 48 hours. So a very quick turnaround from NZXT. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you in making a comparison and making an informed purchase. Whether or not you're just going for the cheapest thing, uh, you can buy all the components for the Player 3, or if you want to pre-build, the Player 3 is a great option. Or if you just want something that performs really well and is quiet and looks really nice, like aesthetically, uh, everything looks great on the main gear here. And if you love RGB, if you're a streamer looking to get some color in there, you know, this is going to be a great way to do that. And it's also very quiet for gaming and recording audio. But let us know what you think about them down in the comments below. And if you're looking for something else to watch, I'll link to our video on the NZXT Player 3, as well as our most recent video. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.